In today's video, we're going to take just two ingredients and put them together in a way that will make possibly, if not definitely, definitely the most delicious mouthful of food you've ever had with just two ingredients. You'll need cabbage and butter, that's it, and salt. We'll also need salt. I'm betting no one in MasterChef history has run past beef and instead grabbed a cabbage in a panicked invention test. But I'm going to demonstrate that they could. I'm going to show you how to do it and I'm going to tell you why it works. It's deliciously simple. Now cabbage, you might think, is a reckless choice here because it belongs to one of the most disliked families of vegetables that we eat. And that includes cabbages, includes kales, Brussels sprouts, uh, also cauliflower. Uh, and these are all brassicas. The majority of us, I'm sure, will have literally cried at some point at being forced to eat these before we got down from the table when we were kids. The reason being that one, they are exceptionally bitter when cooked badly, and two, your parents are bad cooks. But it's time to move past that because you're the cook now. Now the beautiful thing about cooking is, while it can be understood with science, it is ultimately an art. And that means that you don't necessarily need to know what's going on below the surface, as it were, to know how to do it well. For example, an Italian grandma doesn't need to know what gluten is in order to make brilliant pasta. Uh, a pit master doesn't need to understand fluid dynamics to be able to make a really great brisket. And similarly, you don't need to know what glucosinates are in order to cook fantastic cabbage. So today we're gonna to start with the art and cook the cabbage and show you how to do it technique-wise without really going any deeper. And at the end, we can delve into the science. Pan, butter, cabbage, bollocks, salt, lid. So to cook, we're going to take the pan and apply a medium to high heat with it covered. Now the water in the butter is going to steam off as it melts to begin with. And that steam is going to gently cook the entire cabbage to soften it. And the continued heat will eventually boil this off until all we're left with is the butter fat. So we're essentially confiting the cabbage in butter. And the temperature is going to be higher with no water present. And so over time, the cabbage in contact with the pan is going to dry out and it's going to begin to take on the color, which equates to the flavor. And that is all we need to know in order to cook this cabbage really well. And for us to repeat it, we just need to pay attention to the smell, to the color, and the texture of the cabbage as it cooks. Now this cabbage needs ideally 20 to 25 minutes in order to cook and develop that flavor properly. Uh, although you can cook it a bit slower and you can cook up to an hour and you still get the fantastic texture and flavor. So I've tried to cook these as equally and as fairly as possible. So each is just the ingredient, some salt and some butter. Uh, I've browned off the butter as well just to make sure that that flavor is present in both. So I think this is a fair test. Uh, you can color the cabbage a little bit more if you want. The darker you go, the more intense the flavor can be, but it also becomes more bitter, so it's a bit of a balance. Um, there's quite a lot of sweetness in this cabbage, um, so it can take quite a dark color. Uh, so now we're gonna test It's really hard to put into words how good that tastes, um, especially given how simple it is. And especially if you've not had it before and you're maybe used to just boiled cabbage, <laughs> boiled cabbage uh, or even just sauteed cabbage. Uh, it really generates so much flavor to cook it this way and to give it that much color. Uh, so next, the beef. So that's the lean part. Uh, of the sirloin that I've had just the bottom. Um, and it's nice. It has nowhere near as much depth of flavor as the cabbage. Now, when you get the fat on top, it does add quite a bit. Um, I still wouldn't say it's as nice as the cabbage, however. Um, and I don't think this is my preference. I absolutely love meat. I love beef. And yet, this cabbage really packs a punch. It's so delicious. So now for the science, and we're going to look into why it is that these vegetables that could be so incredibly bitter also have the potential for so much flavor. And the answer lies in one of the compounds that they contain called glucosinates. So I've summarized the chemistry of glucosinates on this board and how they produce the flavor that they do in this family of vegetables. So. A glucosinate is simply a glucose sugar with a sulfur and nitrogen containing side chain. And the plants contain an enzyme called myrosinase, which transforms the glucosinate into this, which is an isothiocyanate. And this has a nitrogen, carbon, and sulfur in, and 
that is reactive. That's gonna go off and do a lot of different things if left around. It's also what's known as a mustard oil. So that is what creates the sensation of the kind of burning flavor that you get. So once we're here at this compound, how we cook it is going to determine the taste that we end up with. And if your parents were like mine, which they probably were, they're going to boil it for a long time. And with such a large amount of water, with that amount of heat, then what you're going to do is simply create hydrolysis and this is going to turn into hydrogen sulfide, which is quite unpleasant and contributes towards that horrible smell and horrible taste that these vegetables can have. But if you don't waste that potential flavor and you apply heat, but this time you're removing water like we're doing with the butter in that it's high temperature and water is being boiled off or evaporated, then you've got dry conditions and then this reaction is a lot slower because there simply isn't the water around to go this way. And so instead, you're gonna start producing multiple nitrogen and sulfur containing flavor compounds. And these compounds are the principal flavors in creating that meaty, roasted, nutty, delicious taste. So by applying a high heat and removing water, we've directed this huge amount of potential for flavor into flavor and not into eggy gas. So we don't need to know the science in order to be able to cook beautiful vegetables, but our curiosity is rewarded because what the science allows us to do is to dig below the surface and understand the processes that contribute towards making that flavor or making that food. And in this case, for example, we could perhaps look to other vegetables that contain these glucosinates, like these rich nitrogen and sulfur containing sugars, and see if they would respond similarly to cooking them with butter over a high heat. And indeed they do. So we can take any of these brassicas and you can apply that process and you can create something delicious in the same way. And as I mentioned earlier, cauliflower is a really good example of that. Uh, if you want to try and do the same thing, you can just don't cook it anywhere near as long. So within about 10 minutes, 15 minutes in a pan, this is going to become very soft. Uh, you could then make a really nice puree or a soup from it. But if you want to have it as something that's got a bit of bite, then do be careful with the cooking time. And therefore you might also want a slightly higher pan temperature just to get the color before it softens. So cooking is both art and science and both are completely valid ways to approach the subject. You know, when we think of art, we've got, uh, so this is Nigel Slater's Green Feast and in it are a number of lovely recipes and dishes that you can make at home uh, with just lists of ingredients and how to cook that individual dish. And the other end, we've got the Noma Guide to Fermentation. Now, while this has recipes in, really this is a book of processes. And what they're doing is understanding and applying processes to different foods specific to the Nordic region in order to generate new flavors. And in a later video, we're gonna look at some of their products. So they've got a smoked mushroom garum and a vegan exo sauce. Uh, and so this has been born out of some of their research and applying processes to different foods in order to make a familiar product, but with different ingredients. So thanks for watching. I encourage you to go off and cook that cabbage. It's incredibly delicious and uh, just great to see how much flavor you can get out of those kind of vegetables with a really simple process. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.